Hello, friends. Are you tired of looking at those ugly recycling and trash bins in your home? We all know that we need to sort our recyclables, but that also means multiple ugly bins. Newer homes have pull out bins in their kitchen cabinets, but what do you do if you have an older home without enough cabinet space? If only there were some way to hide these bins, something that looked good, but could also be still functional. Something that could be opened hands-free and hide several bins. Hmm. But where are we going to find something like that? We came up with a clever linkage system and designed these three different boxes to create a kitchen recycling cabinet that anyone can build. We created three designs so we could fit most aesthetics and skill levels. We personally built the wavy frame so we are going to feature that one in this video, but we'll briefly talk about how to build the other two. Feel free to use the chapter markers down below to skip ahead to the one you're interested in, or check out our blog post for more detail than we can fit into this YouTube video. Once you have the plans, you'll need some lumber. Your local hardwood dealer will be a great resource as they often stock better looking wood than you'll find in a big box store. The first step to building the wavy layered frame is to cut the boards to length. A great way to do this is by setting up a stop block on the table saw or miter saw in order to quickly get repeatable cuts. You measure the first board, move your block to the end of that board, Lock it in place and then cut each of the boards to length. Fast, easy, repeatable cuts. Now to turn the boards into wavy strips. We start by marking the center point at the end of each board. You want to make sure that the wavy cuts start and end at the center point in order to make joining them up easier later. Then we bring them over to the bandsaw and rip them in half. Even a low powered bandsaw makes quick work of this task. The trick is to have a large blade with a low tooth count to speed up the ripping process. We're using a half inch blade with four teeth per inch. As you're cutting, make sure you're alternating the pattern and not falling into a repeatable rhythm. You don't want all of the layers to look the same. To clean these up, we used a bench top belt sander. The end roller works great to remove any bandsaw teeth marks and gets into the valleys of the wavy pattern. It also makes chamfering the edges easy. A router would be more consistent, but this gives it a hand carved look. To ensure we had a constant inside dimension for each layer, we marked each long piece to know where the short pieces will join up. Then we add a bit of glue, align the pieces with our mark, and use tape to apply a clamping force while it dries. You have to pull the tape pretty tight, but this method works well on these odd shapes. Once the glue is dry, it's back over to the bandsaw to round off these corners. Then, back over to the belt sander to smooth them out. And with that, we're ready for finishing. As much as we love Rubio Monaco, we wanted our kitchen recycling cabinet to match our kitchen cabinets, so we will be using a Minwax stain in the Jacobean color. This goes on super easy. Just use a rag to wipe it on, and then come back and wipe off the excess. After all the pieces are dry, it is time to assemble the layers. We don't use glue here as we don't want to have to clean up the squeeze out from between the finished layers. Instead, we align several layers, pre-drill a few holes, countersink to recess the screw head, and then drive a screw into each hole. We then repeat this process a few dozen times until we get to the top layer. Since we didn't want screws showing in our top layer, we used a small amount of glue and pocket screws to hold the board from the inside. This is easily done by making an angled pilot hole, making a recess, and then driving in the screws. All that's left now is to cut an opening for the foot bars linkage piece to come through, and this box is ready. We're going to quickly cover the other two styles now, but feel free to jump ahead to the linkage using those chapter markers. The plywood frame is designed for beginners to the DIY woodworking space, so its construction is pretty straightforward. First thing to do is to cut the plywood into panels. A track saw makes this quick, but you can always use the table saw. 
or oversize your panels and then bring them over to the table saw to cut them to their final dimensions. If you don't like the look of plywood edges, then you'll want to apply some edge banding. You can buy rolls of edge banding to apply with an iron, or you can cut thin strips of wood and then glue them to the edges of the panels with tape or bandy clamps. With the panels finished, give them a quick sanding. To keep from going through the veneer, just hit it with a light pass at 180 grit before moving on to finishing. To finish these panels, we highly recommend Rubio Monocoat's Oil Plus 2C, especially if you picked a nicer veneer plywood. Check out our Rubio Monocoat review for some examples of color and wood species combinations, along with instructions of how to apply it. The easiest way to assemble these panels is with pocket screws. Simply use a pocket hole jig or drill an angled pilot hole, and then drive a screw to hold the panels together. You'll have your frame put together in no time. Next, we're gonna talk about the shaker style frame, but feel free to jump ahead to the linkage using those chapter markers. For the shaker style frame, start by bringing the boards over the table saw, set up a stop block, and then cut all the pieces to length. Our crosscut sled makes quick work of this and ensures we get accurate cuts. Then, we can set up the fence and rip them to width. Once the pieces are the right dimension, we can focus on the shaker style features. First up is the dado slot. We raise the blade to about half of an inch, set the fence so the blade is centered, run the piece through, flip it around, and run it through again. Now, we move the fence a bit and run one of the boards through to widen the slot. We flip it around and run it through again to keep the slot centered and repeat this process until we get a good fit for the center panel. Next, we're gonna make the rabbits for the vertical frame pieces. We start by setting the fence so the rabbit will be just as long as the slot is deep. Then, we adjust the blade height until it just touches the bottom edge of the slot. We can now use our miter gauge to remove this material with a couple of passes. Then we flip the board over and remove the material on the other side. After a quick test fit, we just need to cut the plywood insert and then we're ready to assemble the panels. You can do this with glue and a few clamps, or if you're worried about wood movement, you can glue just the frame and then secure the inner panel from rattling with a small nail. Just like the plywood frame, we recommend finishing these with Rubio Monaco Oil Plus 2C and then assembling the frame with pocket screws. Now that you have a frame of your choice, we can move on to the linkage. We start by cutting the various strips of wood we need for the linkage and supports. On the linkage strips, we start by marking out the locations for the holes we need and then center punch them to keep our bit from walking. To drill them, we use this drill block to ensure our holes stay perpendicular to the face of the boards. This ensures the linkage will go together well later. The shoulder bolts have a 5 16 inch shoulder and the threaded inserts require a 23 64 inch hole. All of the brands are different though, so it's always good to do a test piece first. With our holes in place, we need to round off the corners so the pieces pivot better. To do this, we just traced out the rounded profile and then brought them over to the bandsaw to finish them off. We also cut out a notch for our foot bar to sit in. After a quick sanding, these pieces were ready for finishing. We just wiped these down with a quick coat of stain as well in order to match the box. All that's left is to give the foot bar a quick coat of paint and we are ready to assemble. To assemble this linkage, we start by drilling a few holes for the threaded fasteners that the shoulder bolts will screw into. The spacing on these is pretty critical, so we reference our plans and then carefully measure out their locations. We use a center punch to make sure our bit won't walk and our drill block to work our way up to the correct size. We install these set collars on our drill bits to make sure that we never drilled too deeply. The last thing we want to do is drill through our frame. We used to use tape for this, but we found these cheap rings are much more reliable. To make sure these inserts don't back out over time, we give them a drop of super glue before screwing them in. We then repeat the same process to install the threaded inserts into some of the holes in the linkage pieces. 
We use washers to keep the wood surfaces from rubbing and ensure we get a smooth actuation. And then pre-install our shoulder bolts and check their fit. If everything checks out, then we are ready to attach these to our frame. The shoulder bolts easily screw into the threaded inserts, so putting this together is pretty quick. We start with the foot linkage and then the lid pivot block. Give that a good spin just for fun. I mean, to make sure it works. And then attach the linkage arm to bind the two together. Ta-da! We have a functioning linkage. To make attaching the lid easier, we're going to lift our pivot block until it's horizontal and then clamp it in place. We then drop the lid on and make sure we have even spacing on all three sides. It helps to have someone hold this for you. We drill a few quick pilot holes, add chamfers, and then drive our screws into place. Next, we install the support bar to keep the lid flush and give it some support when it's closed. The back panel is even easier. We just set our back support bar so that it's recessed in from the back wall and screw it in place. Then, we bring over the back panel and screw it into place as well. The last thing to assemble is the foot bar. This goes on pretty easily with just a couple of screws, but the real magic happens underneath the box. Whew, magic. By putting a screw into the bottom of each of these linkage pieces, we can adjust them in or out to set the open position for our lid and keep it from ever overextending. Now we just brush off the dust and we're ready to carry it upstairs. We have a trash can inside this station that has a foot pedal. So we're going to add a strip to the linkage that will actuate this foot pedal for us, which means we're going to have to get inside the box. This is an important step, so make sure you pay close attention to what's going on. Whew. All done. I hope you caught all that. What? You did it? All right, let's try this again. This will be a pretty tight installation, but the concept is pretty straightforward. We're going to position one strip of wood on the front of the trash can that is thick enough to press down on the pedal when we actuate our linkage. Then we install another strip of wood behind the bin to keep it from sliding backwards over time. The hardest part of this was just getting the drill where it needed to go for that front strip, but the back strip is much easier. Then we just drop in the rest of our bins and we are done. We chose to have trash, glass, and paper and plastic recycling bins in ours, but you can customize it to fit your needs. We've always wanted to do one of these wavy, textured patterns, and we're really happy with how it turned out. What do you think? Which of the three frame styles would you build for your home? If you've enjoyed this video, then you are going to love seeing some of the future builds that we have planned. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of those videos when they come out. Maybe you saw those headboard clips earlier and you're curious how that build went. If so, then click on that tile on your screen to go check out that video. It is definitely one of the nicest pieces we've ever made. Thanks for watching.